Hello learners, welcome to lecture 3. The title of today's lecture is Elements of Human Communication. A very interesting uh, component, Elements of Human Communication. This is a process which is significant and is not a dull and a passive process. It is a very dynamic and active process comprising several important elements and uh, what are these elements? As we have seen in the first two lectures, communication process is very intricate, multi-layered, dynamic and a very important medium of interaction between people. So it has got a few vital elements. What are these? Firstly, initiation. Communication begins when a source initiates a statement. Somebody has to initiate with a statement or with a gesture and then it gets initiated. Then there is feedback. Once the receiver receives, he or she has to give feedback. The response of the receiver that is sent back to the source forms the feedback. Then you have the channel. Channel connects the source, that is the speaker and the receiver. Then you have the very important situation as a factor. Situation is a place or setting in which a communicative event occurs. This determines largely what kind of a language, what kind of an attitude you assume. Depending on the situation, you keep varying this. Then we also have purpose. Every communicative event has a purpose behind. It consists of the intention of the source or the speaker. That is the communicative aim of the speaker. Then the attitudes involved. Both the sender as well as the receivers, their attitudes matter very much. The speaker and the listener carry with them certain ideologies, certain worldviews, beliefs, likes, dislikes and aptitudes. Ideologies, how they have been conditioned during their development from a child to an adult, from an adult to an elderly person and what are their likes and dislikes. All these form part of their attitude development. This is a vital factor. Then of course, we cannot discount this. This is the knowledge element. The speaker has to possess adequate knowledge of the message that is to be transmitted. This is where some people flounder. Some people make the mistake. That's why very often you find some people are very articulate, but they don't seem to say anything much in terms of substance. It clearly shows that they lack the domain knowledge or the subject in question. Then of course, if you have knowledge, you also have to have expression. Expression consists of the ability to transmit or communicate through verbal and non-verbal medium. Fluency of expression, clarity of expression, and intelligibility. Now, what is this intelligibility? Fluency, you all know, clarity, clearness, and intelligibility of expression pave the way to effective communication. Here, intelligibility means when you say something or when you speak out something, the listener should be able to find it very clear and he should find it easy to understand you. There are people who are knowledgeable who know the language, but somehow the delivery is so improper that they don't, uh, they are not intelligible. So intelligibility also has to be taken care of. The other vital factor is of course language, we have been saying this. Like I was just told you, there are people who can be articulate about nothing, they have language. There are people who have domain knowledge, but they don't have language. So. Language is one of the most important elements of the human communication process. To know the syntax, the vocabulary, the appropriate words, and also how words are pronounced, all these form part of language. Then you have intellectualism. Now communication is sustained and it becomes effective only in an intellectual ambience. I underline this ambience. That is. The speaker and the listener have to express and understand views calmly, mark these words, calmly, rationally, reflectively, precisely and efficiently. That's why 
you will never have effective communication in an atmosphere of noise, in an atmosphere of ill will, fighting. Their language becomes a, not a means of communication but a source of confrontation. So, an intellectual climate is very much essential. What we mean by ambience here is the atmosphere, the climate, the surroundings. It should be calm, it should be rational, it should be very contemplative, reflective, precise and efficient. Only then, good quality communication can be sustained. Here again, in your spare time, you need to go to these web links and reinforce whatever you have been listening to me and further your knowledge. And thank you very much or we will meet again for the next lecture.